Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking business, which is not something I normally do on my channel, but with it being a new year, I feel like it's a great time to start a new business. So I'm gonna be telling you some tips and tricks on how to start a business as an influencer, but on the accounting and business side versus, you know, like the camera and equipment and those kind of things. So if you want to learn some tips and tricks on how to start a business on the accounting business side, then just keep watching. Like I said, this is going to be um, a like tips and some tricks on how to start a business yourself um, on the accounting side for influencers. So I, I guess a little background on me and why I feel qualified to tell you is because this is actually what I do for a living. YouTube is, if you don't pay attention to my numbers, it's not a career for me. YouTube is something I do on the side for fun. I'd like it to be a career one day, but that's not what it is right now. Actually, what I do for a living is accounting, and specifically, um, our firm helps small businesses start up. So that is actually specifically what I do. So I'm going to do a self-promo right now, you know, be the true influencer and let you know that I do have an ebook on this that actually goes more in depth. So I will link the website down below. I am only selling it for $9.99 but it's very useful. It's cheap, but it's useful. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit of how to do some stuff, touch on a couple of things that actually won't be in the book that I've just noticed people asking questions on Twitter to other people because they don't know business side of things and so they're worried something's a scam. So I, w I, will, <laughs> I will touch on that stuff as well um, because I realize if you're not in the accounting field, some things do sound probably like a scam. Um, the first one I might as well just touch on it now because if you don't understand what I'm saying that kind of sounds weird um, but I did see on Twitter the other day somebody asking saying a brand asked for a W9 from them and that it wanted to put their social on it they said hey is this a scam blah 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 um, I did respond but I figured I should respond here as well because that doesn't not everyone sees that stuff so what a t W9 is is for an, a company at the end of the year to send you a 1099 of how much they've paid you in a year, and then you take that 1099 and you put it on your tax return. So if you do not wanna give somebody your social, you can apply for an EIN number as a sole proprietor on the IRS's website, so that way you give them an EIN number rather than a social. Some people I know think you can only have an EIN number if you are a business, but you can apply as a sole proprietor. Um, and basically, if you're a sole proprietor, that means you are taking that 1099 you get at the end of the year, and you're putting it on your personal tax return as what's called a Schedule C. I would say only do that if you don't anticipate on making much money. Like if you're just starting out, you can do that. Um, but if you want to, you know, have your mindset and have your business already the way you want it to be at the end, go ahead and set it up the right way. <laughs> Um, there's nothing wrong, I guess I shouldn't say the right way, because there's nothing wrong with being a sole proprietor and having your company just as a Schedule C on your personal return. The only downside of that is how much you pay in taxes. In my book, I'll kind of go over this as well, and my book is more geared towards doing it the way I'm about to tell you, so if you don't think that's a good option for you, then my book's not gonna be for you. So basically, trying to think of how to break this down. So if there's multiple different kinds of ways you can have a business, like I said, you can do it just as yourself, as an individual, which is called a sole proprietor. You can do that. And like I said, it'll just be on your personal tax return as what's called a schedule C. I'm going to be redundant here. <laughs> sorry. I tend to talk in circles. So if I repeat things, sorry, like I said, you can do it that way only downside of that is you're paying self-employment tax on the whole profit that you make and that can get pretty pricey i can't remember the exact number it's 15 point something percent i could google it hold on let's google it that way i can tell you more accurate you know i don't memorize these things i just know it's more expensive most times 15.3 percent was 2019 
Oh, good question. Are they changing it for 2020? Nope, same. So you pay 15.3% on the whole profit of your business. So that is one way you can do it. You can also set up to be an LLC. However, you can also be a sole proprietor as an LLC and same thing happens with that. You're paying self-employment tax. Um, you can do partnerships, you can do corporations, you can do, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, and I think it mostly just depends on how your business is going to be in the future. So my suggestion is to start it as what I will tell you in a second. And then if your business grows crazy and you start making a lot of money, and I'm talking a lot, then I would suggest sitting down with an accountant, also maybe a financial planner, and talking to them because once you start making more money, you could be doing it in different ways to save yourself even more in taxes. So those are kind of later in life, but I'm just wanting to tell you about starting. So what I suggest and what our firm typically suggests is to become an LLC, but then tax that LLC as an S Corp. So the reason for that is because then what you do instead is you create a wage for yourself. And when you create that wage, you're paying then the taxes on that wage rather than the full profit of the business. So it's hard to explain in layman's terms because I mean, obviously if you're not in the field, it's not gonna make sense. And it took me, you know, when I first started, it took me a while to grasp the concept. So I completely understand not understanding it. And I have a lot of clients that come to us and when they're asking questions, I try to figure out ways, like my husband, my favorite thing to do is try to use car analogy to help him understand. So since this is really broad, broad of who could be watching this, I don't know how to really explain it to you. I could use cars, but not everyone knows cars. <laughs> so I'll try my best. Um, but basically, so take for example, let's say you had 30,000 of a profit at the end of the year. If you were as a sole proprietor, you're now going to be paying that 15.3% off of the whole profit of that 30,000. Now let's say you had 30,000 of a profit at the end of the year, but throughout the year you took, took, and I'll explain the year quotes in a second, but let's say you took that and you said, okay, my wage is going to be 15,000 this year or 20,000. Now you're only paying taxes off of that wage rather than the 30,000. So the way our firm does it is we actually have a um, tax planning software. I don't know why words aren't coming to me today, but we have a tax planning software that we can plan for the next year of what you could potentially owe and make. So obviously you're not going to know what you're going to make, especially when you're first beginning. But after a year goes by, you could have a rough idea of how much each quarter or each month you're making so that way you can kind of estimate <laughs> estimate how much you will make in the next year. So then when we do that, we can come up with how much you're going to owe at the end of the year and then we can use how much you're going to owe and create a wage with how much you're going to owe so that way hopefully at the end of the year you come out to not owing anything. Um, the IRS does say your wage has to be reasonable, however they don't they, they don't necessarily say what reasonable means. So, you know, if your business is only making 30000 that would be stupid to say, okay, well, now my wage is 30000 You know, it's kind of a give and take. You, I, I definitely, definitely, definitely suggest seeing an accountant or a CPA to figure up your wage. If you want to do everything else yourself that I'll, I'll tell you how to do, you can. But I don't recommend trying to figure out your own wage because you could overshoot yourself and end up paying in and trust me, trying to get them to refund you will be a pain and most of the time won't happen. Or you could pay too little and then they'll penalize you for not paying enough in. So I definitely suggest talking with somebody when it comes to actually figuring up your wage. Like I said, if you're wanting to save money and you want to do everything yourself, completely understand, but it is worth the money to spend maybe an hour with an accountant to figure up your wage. You know, I don't, a lot of firms charge different prices. So if you want to get a quote for that, because I know 
our firm we try to be affordable because like i said our niche is small businesses and so small businesses typically they can't afford normal cpa firms that are in the thousands to do anything so ours is 95 dollars an hour so it's pretty affordable so i would just call around but that's the one thing i definitely suggest investing money into is to have an accountant that helps you with those things or you know if you get in a binary like ah, i really don't know what to do here at least then you have somebody that you can call and you know yes you might spend money doing that and so it's not necessarily saving you but if it's only to call every here and there you know to ask some questions go in talk to them for an hour that's a lot better like in my head and maybe it's just because this is what i do for a living I would rather have a clear conscious knowing I'm doing something accurate than try to Google it, not actually understand what I'm doing, and then get penalized. Because in the accounting side of the world, there's penalties for everything. So you would rather do it the right way than try to half-ass it and then be penalized and have to pay a lot in penalties. That was a long way of saying I suggest you be an LLC and tax it as an S Corp. Like I said, I go into depth and kind of give examples in the ebook. So as far as setting up a business itself, I kind of just went a weird roundabout way of telling you this, but so to set up an LLC, you will want to check with your state. I would call out your secretary of state first to see if you can do this. So in my state, which is Iowa, you actually don't have to go to a lawyer to set up an LLC. And a lot of people still in Iowa think you have to because if you Google it, most of the time it tells you, you need to go to a lawyer to have them write up these papers. Like I said, that's at least here in Iowa. So what I would do to save yourself money is call your secretary of state and ask if this is something you can do. So here in Iowa, you only need a certificate of organization to in order to submit it to create an LLC. So certificate of organization, which I do have an example in the ebook that you can just basically, you know, copy and paste it and put it into Word and then change your wording. Basically, all you have to do is say who the owner is, the owner's address, the business name, the business address. That's pretty much it you pay a fee and yeah so in Iowa you do that and actually we now have an online way that you can submit it before you used to have to also get it notarized now you don't you can just submit that paper online so honestly when we help people we do it for free because in order to actually charge somebody you do have to have a law degree so we don't charge anyone we do it for free we just sit there and help you do it basically we show you how to do it um, but we literally just have a Word document and you put the name, you put the business name, put the address, that's it. And then you submit it online through our online portal and then you pay $50. That's it. You don't have to go pay hundreds or thousands to a lawyer. So that is something that I'm pretty passionate about telling people because when somebody comes to me and they tell me how much they spent at a lawyer's office doing that, I'm like, you poor thing. <laughs> so. Like I said, I don't know if that's the same with all states. I only know my state, but it doesn't hurt for you to at least then call your secretary of state and ask because if you can, that's going to save you a lot of money. Next. So once you have that submitted and you have it accepted from your state, you can get your EIN number. You can technically get it beforehand, but you're not supposed to, but uh, the website's not going to stop you. It will ask you if you already have it, and I've seen people come in having it not setting up with the state, so you can obviously say yes and bypass it and lie, but in reality, you're supposed to have it accepted by your state first. So once you have it accepted, all you do is go to irs.gov, and I think it's actually on the front screen. It says something about getting an EIN number. If you can't find it, there's a search box at the top that you can just write, get EIN number, and then you can actually apply for it online. It's super easy. As soon as you're done filling out all the stuff online, it gives you an EIN number right then and there. Once you have the business submitted with your state and accepted, you have your EIN number, then you need to go get a bank. And it's pretty important that your bank is separate from your personal. So you can't, at least once again in my state, and I'm pretty sure it's with every state, you have to have those two documents. You have to have the seal from the state on the certificate saying it was accepted, and you have to have an EIN number. Some states I think require more, but our state just requires those two. So once again, whatever you're banking, just call them and ask if that's all they require, rather than wasting your time going down there and then having to leave. <laughs> For 
starting a wage. Like I said, I highly recommend going to somebody else to figure out the wage for you. When you're first starting out, you don't need to pay a wage, okay? I, our kind of rule of thumb is until you start making about 10,000, there's no point in paying a wage because that's not a reasonable wage regardless. So I would wait until your business is actually making money. You know, if you're just starting out and at the end of the year you've only made 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000, you're not gonna pay a wage. That's all you have left. So kind of go at your own tempo. Once you start seeing that you're making good money, I would say maybe about 10,000. Like I said, it's completely up to you what you feel comfortable. If you start thinking, you know, hey, I have 5,000, I wanna start paying something in because I don't wanna risk owing anything at the year, end of the year and getting penalized for not paying in, by all means, start doing it. Um, but we typically wait until around 10,000 ish Because um, once again IRS doesn't define what reasonable for a wage is you do just have to pay yourself something eventually Once you start making money so once you are making money and you figured out your wage you pay those in two places so actually possibly three depending on your state. So you pay it with the federal government which is paying for federal withholding, it's paying for Medicare and Social Security. So you pay that, it's technically, the, it's called EFTPS and like I said, all of this is in the ebook with links and everything. So you pay it through there, you create an account, they send you a PIN number, it's super easy once you get it set up, but don't start paying yourself until you're actually making money and a decent amount. And the reason I say that is because once you start paying yourself, you can't stop. You can go a quarter and say, okay, I'm not paying myself anything this quarter because I'm not making much money. However, what I mean by you can't stop is you cannot stop submitting the quarterly reports. So you have to submit a report every quarter along with paying payments. So your payments could be monthly or quarterly or semi-monthly. All of it just depends on how much your wage is, and that's why I say I suggest seeing somebody because they'll help you to understand, you know, okay, here's how much your wage is, which means this is how often you should pay. There are thresholds per state, also per federal, of how often you have to pay. So if your wage is above that threshold, or it's not technically your wage, it's your payroll liabilities, but let's make it simple for you guys and just call it your wage. So if your wage gets over a certain threshold, you have to pay in monthly, quarterly, semi-monthly, however much, depending on how much you're making. So that's why, like I said, I really suggest seeing somebody, but if you wanna do this on your own, I do have it in that ebook saying, you know, how often. Threshold for federal is if you are paying in, and this isn't your wage. What I mean by paying in is the total for federal withholding, Social Security, and Medicare. Those three combined, those taxes that you're actually paying in, if those reach over $2,500 in a quarter, you have to pay monthly. So like I said, there are different thresholds for how often you have to pay. There's also different thresholds for your state. I don't know every state. Like I said, I only know Iowa. Iowa is $500 a month. You have to then pay monthly. Um, but I have links in my ebook that will take you to your Department of Revenue's website or your, you know, the federal website and all the different websites. At least I tried to find them. Um, so those, that's the federal. The state one, like I said, just also depends on your state, but there is a state website that you'll pay um, depending on what you're doing if you start selling stuff. You know, if you have merch or if you have whatever else comes with being an influencer that you are selling, then you might, you'll need to get a sales tax uh, permit. Kind of goes in more on once you start adding to your influencer business. Some people actually make that a separate business, so it's completely up to you. So if you want to keep it that your social media influencer is one business in its own, then you can do that and then have a separate business for your merch, you can do that. Um, so if you do do that, then you don't need to worry about sales tax when it comes to the influencer side because there's nothing you're really selling. So the other thing that you could possibly have to pay is state unemployment. So let me actually back that up. Everyone has to pay federal unemployment. Um, it normally maxes out at $42 a person per year, but you do have to pay federal unemployment and you don't have to pay that until the end of the year or 
if it gets to hundred dollar increment so if you start having employees as well if you get to that hundred dollar increment then you have to start paying that federal unemployment but if you only have yourself you're only going to max it out probably about 42 um, so then that only has to be paid at the end of january of each year um, but the other thing like i said could possibly be state unemployment so the reason i say could possibly be is because once again my state you don't have to for my state if you are a single member or if you're just the owner so let's say how i say you should be set up as an llc tax as an s corp even if there's more than one owner and it's, you guys are shareholders of the company you don't have to pay state unemployment on yourself because and it makes sense because in my eyes it's like okay you're not going to fire yourself from your own company and then collect unemployment off of your own company so that's why in my state they don't do it and it makes sense but i don't know about every state so like i said in the ebook i have links for every state's unemployment website so there should be a number you can find there to call them and ask them if you're required because in our state you can volunteer to do it makes no sense a lot of the firms in town town volunteer the owners to pay it i don't know why you would do that you're wasting their money but by all means be my guest i think it's hilarious when somebody comes to us and we're like why are you paying this and they're like oh i, I thought we had to no so and you can only cancel it once a year at least in our state so only in december by a specific time you have to tell them i don't want to do it for the next year so that's another thing call your state or call your unemployment and ask if you even have to. Because if you don't have to, that can save you a lot of money. Obviously though, if you have no claims on yourself, like if no, you haven't hired anyone, they haven't, you haven't fired them and then they haven't tried to collect, your rate should be zero and you shouldn't have to pay anything. You should make, just have to submit the report saying how much you paid yourself. But other than that, you shouldn't have to pay unless, like I said, you start having unemployment claims on your business. Another thing that you should definitely look into or at least definitely start immediately is some kind of bookkeeping or record keeping um, if you don't want to spend the money to buy a software to do bookkeeping at least create some kind of like Excel spreadsheet something to keep track um, also if you're keeping your receipts take pictures of them it sounds so stupid to say but you know you have to keep stuff for seven years so if the irs comes down on you in six five years from now those receipts are not they're basically going to be non-existent because the ink rubs off and it's something nobody thinks about even though we all know it happens so definitely take pictures of them um if you do want to invest in getting something some kind of software. I recommend QuickBooks just because that's what I use all the time and that's what I know. Um, I've never actually used this side of it, but the online version has a uh, picture. It can basically, okay, the online version can go on your mobile phone and then you can take pictures. So you could take a picture of the receipt and then tie it to an expense. So like you could create, you know, let's say, I went to Alta and I bought makeup specifically to review for a video. Okay, I could go in QuickBooks, put the date, put Alta, how much I spent, take a picture of the receipt, and it'll save it with that expense line. So you don't have to actually keep the receipts, it should keep it all in the cloud. I've never actually used that feature, but I know it's available. So that's definitely something I would look into if you're not wanting to keep a crap ton of receipts. I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, when it's tax time, please, for the love of God, don't bring a box of receipts. Your accountant will hate you, okay? I, I'm just gonna make the statement for all tax preparers for them. Don't bring receipts. <laughs> trust me, trust me they'll hate you. Um, so basically, if you aren't wanting to use the software, like I said, or something like that, keep an Excel spreadsheet and update it monthly or weekly, however often, depending on how often you're buying stuff for your, your business. Um, and then just give them that Excel spreadsheet at the end of the year that has the totals because they will love you a lot more. It'll be a lot easier on them. Also, depending on the firm, some places charge by the hour of how long it takes them. So if you're giving them a box of receipts, it's gonna take them a long time to add that up. So if you already have totals for them, you can just give them the totals. Um, also, please, please, 
please, for your sake and your accountant's sake, do not just round numbers. The IRS will notice if you start saying, oh, this was 1,000, this was 500, this was 10. They're gonna start noticing that stuff and then they're gonna come audit you and say, no, I want receipts, I want proof, and then you could have to pay back if you overshot those numbers. So just to be safe for you, don't do that. Just give them exact numbers. <laughs> Anything else? I feel like there's probably so much more that I just can't think of. So if you have questions, leave them in the comments and I will definitely answer them as I go. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay, let's think year-end stuff. That's pretty much right now. Um, so year-end, there are year-end reports that you have to submit. And like I said, I go more in depth in the book, so if you can't remember this or can't find this video again later, if you wanna get the book, you'll have at least a physical copy that you can flash back to to remember what kind of things you need to submit. Um, so if you are doing the business as an LLC, taxed as an S Corp in order to then create a wage for yourself, you are technically an employee of your own business. So at the end of the year, you will have to create a W-2 for yourself um, as well as a W-3 and then you can submit them electronically. You can submit them at the social security website and then you have to submit them with your state. At least my state you do. You might not have to with other states. See, this is the thing about only knowing really one state's laws. Same thing with 1099s. You have to create those and you also have to submit them. You can submit them electronically. And both of those for federal are due at the end of January each year. I think that's all I have. If you have, like I said, if you have questions, Leave them down below in the comments. I will be checking that and I will answer them. If you want me to do another business, another business, gah, if you want me to do another video, if you already have a business and you're just looking for other stuff, like you're looking for you know, how to do payroll or questions with payroll, let me know. I will make a second video if you want me to about that. That is the other half that I specialize in. Um, basically, my firm does taxes, it does bookkeeping, payroll, those kind of things. And so my side is actually handling the payroll and the bookkeeping. I'm actually the office manager, but I, I gravitate towards that side. I don't really touch taxes. Yeah, so basically I focus on payroll and quarterlies, you know, tax deposits. So if you guys have more questions or you want a second video going more in depth about something else specifically, let me know. I'd be happy to do it. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to stop rambling. So that is all I have for this video, but thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.